Thank you very much for all the participants that are already with us here. And thank you for deciding to participate in this session. We hope that the experience we bring it to you today will be interesting. I will uh, give you some ideas and provide some ideas on, of the implementation that you are thinking on doing in your own field. But first, we have some housekeeping information that I, I want to read it to you. You will be noticed that you have entered in the meeting with your camera uh, off and uh, your audio muted. Please keep your audio muted to, to help the background noise uh, at, to minimum. No? If you are invited to speak, please unmute yourself by pressing the uh, microphone button in the bottom left of uh, on your hat, hat corner. Uh, left hand corner, sorry, and feel free to switch your uh, video again by using the button in the left hand corner. Um, this session will be recorded, so please be aware that this, this, this is uh, be recorded and um, we will be uh, sharing this in the post the event. In terms of interaction, if you wanted to interact with us, you can you do it using um, the, the, the chat that is uh, in the platform, but also you can also uh, inter interact with, you, with us using the Zoom platform or using uh, 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 um, uh, the Slido that uh, we are going to be sharing with you the, during the session. You can using a Slido go into the uh, a Slido web page, enter with the um, with the hashtag the code of the event hashtag CHS, and then select the name of the session, and you can answer there uh, the the Q and A or the poll. We are going to be having two questions during the session, and also we have the session the question and answer session at the end of the session using Slido. If you had any problem, sorry for that, if you have any problem with connectivity or the Zoom platform, uh, you can also send in an email to our host. Rosalie is helping us uh, today, but you also have here uh, the uh, um, email for uh, the, the, the organizers of this event. If you can email them and they will be solving any problem that you have. Um, well, first, uh, I would like to start by introducing my colleagues that will be facilitating today. Uh, Carla Guananga, she is the Senior Officer of Community Engagement and Accountability for the International Federation of the Red Cross and Red Crescent Society in Ecuador, IFRC. We call it our organization, IFRC. Melissa Monson, Senior Officer of the IFRC in the Andean Country Cluster. She's located in Lima. Uh, Carla is joining us from uh, uh, Quito, Ecuador. And myself, I'm Diana Medina. I'm the Community Engagement and Accountability Regional Manager for the Americans region for the IFRC. I'm joining today from Panama. Thank you again for uh, being with us today. Uh, I would like to start by introducing, uh, I would like to start uh, uh, before we, we share with you the, the experience um, to talk about a bit of uh, our background in terms of what we call community engagement and accountability and what that means for the international uh, Red Cross Red Crescent movement. Uh, we consider the community engagement is, a, is an approach who has uh, uh, four pillars, community participation and feedback through which we support those involved in our programs and operations to share honest, timely, and accessible information about who we are and what we are doing. Uh, but we also set up a system for responding and acting on feedback, questions, and complaints. We are to be focusing in this pillar during uh, the entire session today. The other pillar uh, is information as aid because people need information as much as water, shelter, or food, especially in the midst of disaster or conflict. We support those involved in our programs and operations, provide, providing timely, actionable, and potentially life-saving information. The third pillar is the behavior, the behavior and social chain communication. We were supporting social and behavioral change programs to gain an insight into the perception and behavior of different groups to develop engaging and targeted messages 
but also developing innovative and participatory communication uh, approaches to support communities to adopt safer and healthier practices. And the last pillar is the evidence-based uh, advocacy. We consider that community members are the expert on the challenge and the challenge they, that affect them and in their solution also. But they, are, they can find it difficult to make their voices heard by the relevant authorities or organization. With the community engagement approaches, we help to create spaces for community to speak, about, to speak out about the issues that affect them and make their voices heard to influence decision makers to take action. Uh, before we continue, uh, we would like to ask you uh, some questions that you can answer through Slido, as I, I mentioned, but you can also read the QR code that you are seeing in your, in your screen using your phone. And the question is, what is feedback for you? I'm going to hand over to Carla. Carla will be helping me with sharing a Slido. Carla, I'm giving to you to, to share the Slido question. You can start answering your question, and uh, and we had at first <laughs> two-way processes. Go. What else, guys? What is what is uh, what is for you feedback? Requires a response, constructive. Anyone else? Open communication. I read in the uh, uh, in Zoom chat. Mutual beneficial. Thank you, guys. Opportunity to learn. Excellent. Talk with people. Great. Super. Um, input. Thank you very much, guys. Let's continue with the presentation. We can be recording also your answer here. Here, mutual beneficial it goes bigger in the in the work cloud. Thank you, Carla. <laughs> Let's go back to our presentation now. Uh, okay. So in 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 this in the our community engagement approach, we consider the feedback should be uh, seen as a cycle if we really want to produce impact in in the people we are working uh, with. Also, oh, oh, sorry, uh, sharing here now. Sorry, sorry for that. Um, feedback and complaint system need to receive, analyze, add on and respond to feedback. This process is seen as a continuous loop. Um, if one stage is missing, then the feedback system is not fully functioning, as you can see in the slide. We have to complete the entire cycle to see, to, to see not only the impact, but also result, and to feed into the implementation programs in, uh, of the program or the uh, emergencies operation in our case. During a cash intervention, uh, as we do in all our intervention, we include the community engagement approach in the entire program cycle. This means uh, that from the assessment and planning to the final evaluation, communities are included in the conversation. We start the assessment and planning phase with community meetings, collecting data, understanding the community. Then we move to the next phase, designing feedback mechanism based on what we have discussed with the communities. In this pre-implementation phase, it is also important to develop the key messages linked to the program in order to have a clear and shared narrative with all the staff involved in the implementation. During the implementation phase, we share communication materials and promote and start, of course, implementing the feedback mechanism. In this phase, it is crucial that the feedback mechanism is implemented uh, because it will allow us to solve doubt, collect feedback, and detect any failure or problem on the implementation. The last phase is the evaluation. It is important for the community to evaluate the program, 
its functioning and whether this cash distribution was really in line with the initial expectation. After collecting this information, it is important to return to the community and share with them the result, open the dialogue, and perhaps set next step with them. We, before we continue, we had another question for you in Slido. You can go to Slido or also answer uh, the question using the, the box, the chat box here in, in, in Zoom. Either, and the question is, uh, what do you think is the top social messenger app in the world? Carla, over to you to share the Slido. Okay, WhatsApp, one hundred percent, and Telegram. Yes, yes, you 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 are right. In fact, it's a, it's, 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 it's WhatsApp is being a quite ex, uh, success around the world. Forty percent say Telegram. Oh, it also depends on the region, but uh, but uh, for sure, Charla will share with you some statistics about that. Thank you, Carla. I think it's, it's, it's time to go to, over to you. I leave you the floor. Thank you very much, Guy. We'll see you uh, in, a, in a few minutes. Thank you, Diana. Please, uh, can you share the presentation? or I can share that. Ready, I'm sharing now. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, I think this is still your part in, in WhatsApp. Do you want to continue or do you want me to continue with that? No, no, continue, Carla. Okay, uh, you know, uh, WhatsApp is the top social message in the world, around the world. And you have here in this slide um, a study uh, from HotSuite that it's, uh, it's provided each year. And here you can have another um, uh, soci social messengers as well, like uh, Facebook Messenger, Viber, email, line, telegram, and another as well. But uh, you, can, uh, you can see as well that WhatsApp is the top social messenger in the world as you can answer uh, very good as well. Please, the next slide. It's uh, very easy to create a WhatsApp for a business. Uh, here you have uh, the steps. Uh, it requires only five steps to create a WhatsApp uh, for business. First, uh, download the free app from your iOS or Android device. Uh, second, install and confirm your telephone number. Third, uh, set up the profile. Uh, you need to upload a photo. Uh, this can be a logo uh, of your um, uh, institution your organization name, a category, and description. Uh, it's also possible to add the business address, opening hours, website, and email to you. Uh, it, you can configure your automatic greetings, quick replies, uh, a catalog of images that you want to share with your users as well. Uh, this is very, uh, very good for you and recommendable to the people to see. And finally, share your profile link or your QR code with your target audience to get to know you better. Thank you. The next slide, please. Uh, in this, uh, in this slide, uh, we're gonna share with you uh, study cases about the WhatsApp line in uh, Ecuador, and then uh, Melissa is gonna share with you a study case in Peru. And uh, depending on the country you are, uh, good morning or good afternoon, sorry. Uh, in my case, I am in this moment in a small country in South America, in the very middle of the world. Many immigrants and some have decided to stay here 
while others only stayed here as part of their journey to Peru, uh, Argentina, or other countries. As you can see in this slide, uh, we detected these two different types of migrant people, the permanent and the people in transit. Uh, as you know, COVID-19 affected all of us. And because of that, uh, you know, closing of the borders, uh, I need you to imagine this situation. Many people in transit without jobs or money to live day by day, and furthermore, without knowing when they will be able to continue their journey and achieve the stability needed to follow their dreams of a better life. And for this reason, the Ecuadorian Red Cross implemented a cash transfer program. Because of the pandemic, all the old face-to-face -face procedures changed to a virtual mechanism. In this context, the WhatsApp line proved its efficiency and adaptability for attending and proving feedback to the people in need. Please, next slide. Thank you. For the process, uh, we already have um, a document that it's a data protection note in the Federation that but we also have to create other documents like a guide for the WhatsApp operator that includes questions and answers, uh, also materials to share such as graphics and videos on how to use an ATM and security measures for COVID-19. Finally, um, because of the number of messages, we use a chatbot in order to send automatic messages. We contacted the beneficiaries before they received the money. Um, when the distribution day uh, came, we reinforced the previous messages and solved some remaining doubts. Finally, at the end of the process, we evaluated the program through a virtual satisfaction survey. Please, uh, next slide. Thank you. Uh, and here you have a um, the results of this process. Uh, in the results, uh, about around uh, 400 people received uh, Red Cross assistance and around 700% uh, people, uh, sorry, 700 petitions were attended through the WhatsApp line. Uh, the main doubts of the people correspond to information on how to use an ATM and how to find out the balance information of their cards. And a lot of people were asking to receive humanitarian assistance as well. And in the evaluation part, 98% uh, said they contacted the WhatsApp line. And of that 98%, 99.6% said the service was very good and less than 1% was not satisfied with the service. Thank you. And some of the lessons we learned, uh, finally, in our process, uh, the use of the chatbot was excellent. So in next operations, we want to continue using it. In the first part of the program, we sent messages through WhatsApp groups created just for one or two days, but for next operations and because of data protection between beneficiaries, we are going to use distribution lists instead. Uh, it's good to use other tools to spread information such as a status and WhatsApp catalog. The internal planning is always key and it's important to include those at risk of, of exclusion. For example, uh, flip, uh, people without internet access who contacted us uh, through SMS or telephone line, and we attended those people uh, via these, these lines. And that's for my side, thank you. Hi, well, good morning or good afternoon to everyone from Lima, Peru. I'm going to show you the Peru experience. A little bit of background about migration here is that um, Peru is the second destination country for Venezuelan migrants. 
and approximately 80% are established here in Lima, the capital of Peru, and in Callao. And well, the other one is that most of the uh, workers in Peru, like almost 70% work in an informal way in the informal market. So also many migrants work in the informal market and with isolation and with COVID, a lot of them lost their jobs. So that's why we decided to implement the cash and voucher assistance program here in Lima, Peru in April. And a little bit of background about the feedback mechanism and how it also differences from the process that was followed in Ecuador is that here in Lima, we already had established a WhatsApp line as a feedback mechanism, but for COVID-19. So in the migration project, we've been doing health campaigns in 2019 and early 2020. And we start to do surveys that we can see there in the, in the picture. So, the, so people will... Uh, give us like evaluations about the service that we were given and it was really useful at the beginning in order to improve our work our work but then we saw that we needed a more comprehensive tool that will allow us to have feedback not only about our services but also about people's need people's questions so on one hand we had already thinking about a more comprehensive tool and on the other hand COVID-19 hit Peru and isolation measures started uh, mandatory isolation uh, but we still needed to be in touch with communities and mostly in a context like this where there is a lot of doubt and when there is a lot of questions around a health team such as COVID-19. So we asked ourselves, how can we answer to communities if we can't be on the ground? So with these two, we decided to create a WhatsApp line for COVID-19 as a feedback mechanism. And we've also promoted mostly with migrants was our like first target that we opened the line for the all population here in Peru, if they had, had questions or doubts or they had, had rumors around COVID-19, they could go to this WhatsApp. And then uh, the next one, please. And then we um, also put the CBA program within the, uh, the WhatsApp line as another theme. So since we already had the line working, we had already established different things that are needed to be to implement a WhatsApp line as a feedback mechanism, such as the data protection node, such as, such as the feedback load sheet, which is a really important part because there is where you put like all the requirements and all the interactions that you're receiving. So, but we still needed to do some things to the CBA program, such as the WhatsApp, the Q&A, excuse me, the Q&A, it is super important that all the operators have all the information that they need in order so they can answer questions. So we had a Q&A about COVID-19 first, and then we created one specifically for the CBA program. Also, it is important to have a response protocol because with the COVID-19, the operators knew, because as far as we went to the Q&A to cover all the things, there is always going to be a question that are, is, not be, is not going to be in the Q&A document. So the operators need to know where they can go to to ask these questions. So for COVID-19, we had all that cover because we had health staff. And for the CBA prog program, we had to create also that response protocol and to start gathering the materials that we were going to use, such as how to use the ATM or tips around security measures when you go to withdraw money from the ATM. So we prepare ourselves to uh, look for the, um, for the, for the CBA program, and we promote the line on the distribution day. So on the distribution day, uh, through materials and also through the staff that was implementing the program. So every people that received the car know that they had a number that they could go to whenever they needed in the whole time of the use of the card. So they knew that if they contact us, they will have a kind of immediate answer. And then during the use of the card, I think it is super important and I'm going to uh, link it with the response protocol to have a clear communication flow between the, um, the WhatsApp line team and the operational team. So it is important to know who they can go to and what is the process of the information that we're receiving, that, that the process that is going to, to get. And also how are we going to report uh, how are we going to make the reports in order that they will be useful 
also for, to the operational team. So not only we can address concerns while we're using the WhatsApp line, but also we have reports that will help us to make decisions. Uh, next, please. Uh, so a little bit about the results here is that we, uh, of the 391 cars that were distributed, 63 people uh, access to the WhatsApp line. The main topics are really similar from Ecuador. Um, information about how to use the ATM, even though we gave instructions on the distribution day, it's a theme that we want to uh, remind, it's a thing that we want to work a little bit more. And also about balancing from their balance information and that is related to their bank fees. Because here, like when you use the card in different banks, the, the, it depends on the bank, the bank fee that they're going to charge you. So there were a lot of questions about that. Uh, and the difference from Ecuador, we didn't receive like the petitions of humanitarian aid because since we already had the, the line working to COVID-19, we were receiving those kind of petitions to the COVID-19 theme. And others like thank you notes or a specific request. Also, we did an evaluation at the end of the program to evaluate not only the WhatsApp line, but to evaluate all the process of the CBA program since the first uh, getting in touch of the Red Cross, the distribution date, the support of the WhatsApp line and everything. And among the WhatsApp line, the 60% of the people that answered the survey that weren't all of them said that they contacted the WhatsApp Next one, please. So what are the lessons learned uh, in the case of Peru? Well, first, that not only because of the CBA program, but also from the COVID-19 experience, we have seen that WhatsApp is a great way to receive community feedback and to address questions and concerns uh, on implementation of a CBA program. It is important that um, people know that they can access and they will have the support of the Red Cross, not only when we gave the, the card, but also like during the whole uh, use of, of it, you know. So the second lesson learned, and, and I already said it before, but I, I want to highlight it, is the importance of a fluid communication and a clear communication flow between the operation team and the WhatsApp staff, because it is important uh, to make this, to take decisions on the feedback that we're receiving. And also that, as I said, like on one hand, we are addressing and we are a quest, uh, answering questions and concerns. But on the other hand, we can also use this information to improve the program. So that flow has to be clear and it will help, it, it must help us to make decisions on time. And for example, here, uh, we're about to enter to a second distribution that is going to happen next week, actually. So a lot of the feedback that we received in the first distribution has helped us to improve the second one. So we're doing a couple of things different. One, one is like we are creating new materials that we are creating, for example, a video uh, like this, like gives you more explanation and is more didactic to know how to use the ATM since it's an important issue. And the other one is that we're starting to use, we're going to start use broadcast list on the WhatsApp. So we are already, we are still having the WhatsApp line as a feedback mechanism, but we're, start, we're starting the broadcast list, broadcast list because we think it's important because we realize that people got in touch with us once they already went to the ATM and once they already, the bank already charged them some commission just to check their balance. So in order to avoid that, we're going to do this broadcast list and start giving messages about bank fees, about where they can go, like that it, they, it's like better commission, like better bank fees, about like how to check their balance and uh, these kind of reminders so we can ask they do this type of transaction that will charge them um, commission so uh, and also like other types of reminders so the what the feedback that we have received in the first one is actually helping us in order to improve the program so I, I want to highlight that, that it's important to address concerns of people but it's also important to use this type of information to improve the our implementation and that's the case of Peru. Thank you very much. Back to you, Diana. 
Thank you, Melissa. Um, well, we decided to use uh, WhatsApp because last year, uh, at the end of last year, together with the UNHCR, we did a, a study around the, the region, especially in, in the most affected countries with the situation with migrants, Venezuela migrants in South America. And this study uh, tell us that the main way to communication that they use those migrants is uh, WhatsApp. They really trust in the, in the tool. So we decided to use WhatsApp as, uh, for business as a, as a main to, uh, as a means to communicate ending our session, but we wanted to highlight some uh, learnings and, and conclusions here. Uh, having heard your, these two cases, uh, our conclusion is, uh, uh, is that WhatsApp has improved way making a communication to help to strengthen the program transparency as Melissa and Carla mentioned. People knew that they had a channel they could go in case they had doubt or question about the pro. This uh, integrity, it could be integrity cases and try to solve an, uh, the situation as soon as possible. Um, now we can ask you if you had any question, you can go to Slido or put it in the chat box here in, in Zoom or even in the platform. If you have any question for us, we are more than happy to, to answer your question here, your doubts or um, or any doubt uh, or any other comments that you have uh, regarding our presentation. Carla will be helping me with the, the questions uh, in, in Slido and also uh, Melissa will help me with the chat box or, uh, or the platform question. Diana, we have already four questions in Slido. Super, can you read it please, uh, Carla? <laughs> yes, uh, okay, in Slido the first one is is you mentioned that the evaluation included a virtual survey. Were there other forms of evaluation to see if there were difficulties in accessing the app? Sorry, uh, Carla, can you read it again? You mentioned that the evaluation included a, a virtual survey. Were there other forms of evaluation to see if there were difficulties in accessing the app? Well, um, I would say, well, the evaluation was the main one, but also uh, sometimes we, we uh, sent a survey uh, or question, just science send us a question, a single question that people can answer. And also given that you have the possibility also to start a, a parallel discussion with a specific person, if the question was a really concerning question, we also ask this person if they can give us the more detail in a, to have a discussion separately, not through the line. But I'm not sure, uh, Melissa, if you wanted to answer uh, also about the experience in Peru, because you implemented another uh, options there, no? Yes, so we got in touch by, uh, by the telephone also with the different uh, person that received the card. Um, but yeah, it was very challenging for us because it was an isol because the first distribution was given in isolation measures. So it was difficult to actually like go to the ground and to receive the, the feedback. That's why we had to go to WhatsApp because we didn't have at that time volunteers on the ground because for safety reasons first and because either the, the isolation measures was just like put it in. So they were like really strict. So we try to also um, get in touch with the with the beneficiaries through telephone, like because the evaluation wasn't uh, promoted through the WhatsApp line; it was promoted by telephone with the with the list that the operational team had. Thank you. 
And the other question, Carla, I hope we answer your question. <laughs> Sorry, I was on mute. Okay, the next question is, was the evaluation survey also conducted via WhatsApp or using another channel or platform? Melissa? Yes, the evaluation was doing like for, with a telephone, by telephone. Uh, they, they would was send a link because we wanted to also uh, to have anonym, 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 anonymity. I'm sorry, I don't have, you know how to say that word in English, but yeah, anonymity. Este, so uh, it was doing but sending a link by by phone. Super. Next question, Carla. Next question says. Are there other feedback mechanisms working in parallel to WhatsApp? Well, and sometimes not in this specific uh, Ecuador, Carla could tell you more, but uh, in, in, this, in the Peru, no. But this for us in other uh, experience, like for example, in our response in Bahamas after the hurricane uh, Dorian last year, we had uh, the WhatsApp line and also we had a, a, a hotline uh, supporting all the, uh, because it was a really big uh, um, uh, emergency response. We had a hotline and we had this WhatsApp line there. And in Ecuador, I, uh, in Ecuador, they had a WhatsApp line for the specific for migration, for the migration operation, but also they had another means to communicate with the community because the, uh, the National Society, the Ecuadorian Red Cross, what uh, implementing other projects and they have um, community meetings, not when the uh, isolation measure started, but they had uh, community meetings. They had um, also uh, interviews with uh, community leaders, etc. That was uh, another way to communicate with the communities. Carla? Aside from WhatsApp being established from communication from migrants, are there other conditions that needed to be in place to apply this approach? Well, the, the first thing I will say that is you have to be, be sure that the, the, the people have connectivity, of course, if you wanted to use this type of things, but uh, um, COVID give us no, ch no ch choice here, no? We need to establish some uh, as, as some communication using uh, virtual means, I, I would say. That, uh, um, but also, as I mentioned before, we had this uh, good uh, information coming from the study we, we developed uh, last year. So we were kind of sure that the, the will, uh, will, will uh, work the use of the WhatsApp line. Um, but of course, you have to check if people is trusting in the channel, if people had connectivity, or for example, right now in the COVID response, the Red Cross is, uh, is thinking on having a kind of a different intervention and approach in having, for example, providing a hotspot around the, around the, the, the route of migrants, which is complicated, of course, we are uh, mostly uh, an emergency operation uh, organization and also with, of course, our focus in health, etc. But now we are thinking on having this type of thing because we know that we continue continuation of COVID pandemic, uh, even though we had um, vaccines or not, they still COVID will be with us uh, for a long time. We should have a, a, a way to ensure that people have connectivity and uh, because the virtual or the online uh, platform or, or um, tools are going to be uh, crucial in, in the coming year in terms of addressing communities, no? And we have three more here. Um, okay. The first one. How can smaller INGOs utilize, uh, yes, utilize WhatsApp for cash assistance? How? Well, it's not as, uh, it's not as expensive as we think. Uh, Melissa, I think you can tell us about the, 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 in the, 
budget that you should have. I think it's uh, if the national, if, if an NGO is very small, I don't have the, the resources to implement this, it's a good idea to partner with other organizations like Red Cross. In the case, uh, if, you, if you had a, for sure, you should have a Red Cross or Red Crescent organization uh, close to you everywhere. Um, but also with other organizations or, or other NGOs that you can uh, partner and, and have uh, this type of, uh, of uh, tool to implement. Uh, Melissa, can you, can you yes. mention a bit about the budget? You yes, need? I will say that the, the, two main top, the two main topics that will need budget is one, to, pro, uh, to promote the line, because it, as important is to create a line, if no one knows it, they won't use it. So I think that goes like a, a lot of budget, but actually implementing the line is really cheap because implementation is creating the WhatsApp line that it's free, even like the business WhatsApp is free creating the materials that you're going to use or the messages is internal work. And I think like the other, the other theme is the personnel or the staff that is going to be behind it. But like even right now that we are a, a, like a national level and working like now that the line has, has grown to see like four themes, we're still using one person per term. So the, the line here in Peru, it's open from Monday to Sunday from 8 a.m. till 6 p.m. So we have one person in the morning, one person in the afternoon. And as Diana said, like it could also, you could also work with volunteers, for example. It doesn't have to be like staff, but it has to be like really committed volunteers because if you are going to promote that the line is going to be available that hour, it has to be like, they have to have an answer. So it's not uh, expensive. It is really, uh, I think like I think like any organization can implement and it's a great mechanism. The, the part is that you have to prepare it before. I think like that, prepare like all the, the data protection thing, the, the log sheet, how you're gonna report. That is like the, the most work, but I think it's internal work like from the staff can do it. Uh, Carla, can you read the, the, the question, the, the, all the questions that we had in, in, in Slido? And I will read a question here in the chat box in soon. Yes. To try to answer because we are approaching to the end of the session. Yes, I think uh, you answered the, this one, Pat. Okay. Uh, can you speak about the budget, financial requirements to use WhatsApp? Is there a cost of the platform for setting, ma setting up a chatbot? Uh, other, which is the percentage of time sharing for staff in charge of the WhatsApp line? Was dedicated staff, minimum staff for having the WhatsApp solution? And finally, where can I read a report of this experience, please? And uh, another one, this moment, is there a place to find more guidance on this, such as how the process works? Super. I think Melissa answered some of the questions we had as uh, in the, in the, the, the problem, I would say the only problem that we had with the WhatsApp uh, with business, uh, WhatsApp for business right now, that you can only have two operators at the same time, one using the phone and the other one using the web platform. No, um, but we are we are also discussing with WhatsApp if we can improve this in in the near future. Um, and we had, as Melissa mentioned, in Peru we had two operators uh, working eight hours per day, and then we set set a chat box for the the night hours, no, for that. And uh, it can be different for each organization. It depends on uh, how much uh, how how much do you have in terms of resources in in for for this implementation. Um, Regarding that, we had also a question in, in, in the chat box here in Zoom, use different languages and are order adaptation, sorry, for people with disability or difficult using WhatsApp or without access to a phone. And can I find a write-up of this experience, please? Okay, um, regarding the languages, yes, we had doing that, especially, um, especially in, other, uh, in, in other setup. Uh, for example, with uh, indigenous languages, producing messages in indigenous languages. Um, it's, it's here, for example, in Panama, we are trying to do that because we had a situation with some indigenous communities here, but they use it a lot, WhatsApp. So I think we are thinking on having this type of solution right now. In terms of adaptation in, in, for people with disability or difficulties using WhatsApp, especially with people with disability, we are in, this, in discussion with um, with WhatsApp on that, and they have this new uh, feature that uh, they, um, you can set up the um, voice uh, 
uh, feature for the WhatsApp, and for example, with be, be, uh, people with disability to, to read, to see, etc., you can have it as a, as a um, uh, sound uh, messaging. But we are working with them. No? In terms of people, uh, difficulty to using WhatsApp, especially for the elderly people, we had this problem. But uh, um, some of our volunteers in, in, on the ground have been helping people, uh, elderly people, in how to use their. Um, their uh, WhatsApp and the intelligence phones for this uh, for these reasons, you know, and uh, we also receive SMS through WhatsApp, and we were uh, also uh, uh, answering questions through SMS. So it's, it, it can be a combination of uh, um, of uh, channels in this case, using WhatsApp or using SMS. Regarding the, if you can find this experience, yes, we, are, we, we can share with you the link where you can find these case studies. We already have it documented. And also we are producing, finalizing right now, a uh, kind of a guidelines of how to set up um, a WhatsApp line for this type of intervention. So we will, we will have it available for you in our uh, website, ifrc.org uh, is our web website. And also we are going to have the, we had a, a, a community engagement and accountability hub together with the uh, British Red Cross. And we had there a, a complete library of case studies and information, uh, not only about this type of uh, feedback mechanism, but other things that we have, we produce in internally in, in the IFRC and the Red Crosses and Red Crescent organization around the world. Well, I think we reached the end of our session. Thank you. Thank you very much for participating and for being with us today. Uh, for me and for I uh, for sure for my colleagues was a really good experience to share with you our uh, our uh, experience here. You can see our emails in on your screen. Please, if you have any question, doubt, or you need more information, uh, send us an email. We can share with you links um, on or information to to be more clear on this and other topic that you decided or you need to, to know better about uh, us and our intervention in terms of community engagement approach. It was an excellent session. Thank you very much. Remember that you can contact us and hope you have a, a really good night and rest of the day. Thank you, Carla. Thank you, Melissa, for, for being part of this session. Bye, thank you very much.